Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Rise podcast with me, Hannah Riaz. Honestly, this has been such a labor of love and I'm so, so excited that we can finally share all of these amazing conversations with you all. Before we dive into the first episode, which is with Lee Ryan and Simon Webb from Blue, I wanted to pause for a minute. This conversation with the boys was so powerful, so funny, so interesting that we simply couldn't cut it down into one episode. So especially for you guys, we've made it into two. I hope that you love listening to it as much as I enjoyed recording it. On this episode of Rise, I'm joined by Lee Ryan and Simon Webb from Boy Band Blue, who I can't believe are going on their 20-year reunion tour this year. I'm sitting with the boys now, and they don't seem to have aged a bit. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. If you cut me open, dust comes out. <laughs> <laughs> Lee and Simon, thank you so much for being on the podcast today. Thank you. So excited to have you here. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for having us. It's called Rise or Rise. All right. Yeah. Oh, we harmonized there. Yeah, I like that. It's nice, right? Where was I? Yeah, Rise. Yeah. You guys, I mean, you're obviously still massively in, involved in music. I wanted to sort of know where, where you're both up to at the moment and what you've been up to and what you're doing. Um, what are we doing? Well, right now, um, we've just recently announced uh, a Blue reunion. Um, it's our 20th anniversary, well, 21st anniversary by the time we go on tour. But we just thought it was a great milestone to give the fans something. And, it's, and you know, it's after the pandemic or during the pandemic, we sort of got on the phone and we was like, Do you know what? I think there's a business opportunity here for us to go out there and uh, get some government money. We got a bounce back loan. <laughs> did um, you? Yeah, got a bounce wow. back loan. Um, did it independently. And uh, now we are signed to BMG. Amazing. And we have an arena tour as well yeah. at the end of the year. I mean, obviously you guys love writing music and recording, but is performing on stage definitely always one of the big highlights for you? Uh, I, I mean, I, I like being in the studio. Do you? I like performing live. I always love performing because you get like it's such a rush, you know, yeah. it's like it's such a such such a high seeing all the fans sing the songs back to you. And mm. yeah. I get I get really buzzed. I sometimes I have to calm myself down when I'm on stage because I think like I look like an overexcited puppy or something. Like <laughs> just get a bit. I'm, I look around. The other boys are like this, and I'm like, <laughs> I think, all right, calm down. I've seen Simon's dance moves. You're a pretty good dancer. Oh no, that was me in pain. <laughs> Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was, don't remember what I was saying to you. Yeah. I was like, oh, oh, backstage. And then he was, he was like, you're going to be all right? I was like, listen, man, I'll just style it. Don't worry about that. But um, yeah, that's a, that's one of the things about blues that we always wanted to, we didn't want to be like NSYNC. We didn't want to be like Backstreet Boys. We didn't want to sound like those guys. Yeah. We just wanted to do something that everybody could do if it was a, you know, because not everyone can dance. Not everyone can. <laughs> including us. You know, including us. So, <laughs> and, and we're definitely not in sync some of the times. No, we definitely. Most of the time. So we just wanted to do something that was really relaxed. Yeah. And we used to look at um, All Saints. Oh, yeah. Girl we looked, yeah, we looked at All Saints and we was like, oh, we really like the way, the way that they move in a the record label, put us in contact with um, their choreographer. Oh, and wow. we basically did all of our little leans and stuff like that. Yeah, I so, loved yeah. it. But I think for Blue, it's always about the songs. I mean, you guys have, I mean, have got massive anthems. I still listen to you guys. So I'm having a good clean around the house, pot and blue. I do. Do you know, the, the thing is, I think it's like, it's weird. We did, me and Si did some shows just recently. And um, I couldn't believe the 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 age of the, the audience where, yeah. where some of the the kids there were like, I say kids because they were like 19, 20, yeah. singing along to the lyrics. And I was really baffled because I was like, you weren't even born. Yeah. How do you know? And I think it was obviously their mums or their, their dads and their family probably listened to us growing up, but they knew the songs. Mm. And, um, you know, it just made me realise. I was like, oh, wow. Like, do you know what I used to yeah. hear a lot about Blue is that we were not even a guilty pleasure. We was that boy band that was okay to like. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Because, like, my guilty pleasure was Take That growing up. Really? But, like, a I, but, but I pretended oh, that I pre some preferred... Of the were, some of the tunes were amazing. <laughs> yeah, but I pretended I preferred the East 17. Yeah. Because of the way they looked and it was just cooler. cooler. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I never but... get over Babe. Babe, <laughs> I'm back again. <laughs> I tell you, I'm back again. How did he get away with it? How did, how did Mark go into it? <laughs> Where have you been? <laughs> How did he, I know, honestly, when you think back, think, how did he ever get away with that? But, you know, what, but, but you know what, Mark Owen actually supported Blue on our German tour. Did he? Oh, yeah. when he was a solo? When he went solo. Wow. So that, and then about two years later, take, take that did their big reunion and smashed it. Smashed it. You know, smashed but, um, it. I mean, I went to But yeah, but, but going back to the, back to Blue um, and what we was all, what we wanted to do was make sure it was always about the songs. Yeah. Um, we were lucky enough to work with um, Jimmy Ruffin's nep nephew. 
Was yeah, it, it was his yeah. nephew. Um, David Ruffin. David Ruffin. His uncle was David Ruffin, who did what becomes of the Broken Hearted. Wow. And was in. Um, uh, oh God, why can't I remember the bloody group now? It's the most amazing. Group. Oh, the um, Temptations. Temptations. Yeah. yeah. So the, the old sort the of old school, yeah. sound. and it's so always it. about the yeah. vocals. Yeah, he used to make us do like that. He taught us about how to. Ray, Ray Ruffin taught us about harmonizing together. And then when we first got together, we, it was like we wanted to be that group, but obviously we were so young. Yeah. And we, and we got signed and it went so fast. So we had to catch up. Yeah. Like it wasn't like we were. Um, I mean, talk to me about that because I mean, you were 17, weren't you, Lee? I, I was mean, a you kid. Were, you I was 16. Well, he was 16. Wow. 16 yeah. when I, got I mean, that down. is so young. We released when I was 17, but on my 17th birthday, we went to. We went out to uh, Red Cube, do you remember? Yeah, I do. I yeah. remember. Yeah. In, in Leicester Square? <laughs> yeah. Leicester Square, Red Cube? Uh? Was that the place in the yeah. club? Yeah, yeah. 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 but I was 17. Wow. Like, so, I mean, imagine, okay, I just got out of school, really. I know, so, um, you're, so you're in this band. Yeah. You're everywhere. You're probably... I don't really... think we were out then, were How, we? how no. old were no. you when you hit, like, the heights of Blue Success? So I was 17. Yeah. You and was... I was 22, yeah. I think. So, I mean, you're still young, though. But how, you know, how did, like, because probably from a very young age, this is what you've... I know you were into sports side, but... Music must have been a passion, right? You've, you always wanted to do yeah, it. I sang from when I was like three years old. So yeah. Was like, like, and I'm, so was was it always a plan? Like, I want to be famous. I want to be a big star. Or was it just about writing the music? No, I just, for me, like, I, I was brought up singing. Like, if you ever met my mum, she don't stop singing. She's like, she would make me mm -hmm. sing. She had a hairdressers and she'd be like, I figured out that if I sang to the clients, I'd get a pound. <laughs> So you I was always it. trying to make a pound note yeah. off it. So I thought, yeah, I might as well. Oh go my god, in. pound notes back in the day. Yeah, no, yeah. I was like literally. I I was always. I mean, I just love singing. I I didn't realize I could sing until I was a bit older, really, because I used to like singing. And then I used to like see people get emotional when I used to sing. Yeah. And then I thought, oh, so I must I must have something because you like my friends' mums would cry or I'd make an old lady cry. I don't know if it was bad or good, but they <laughs> cried. Um, yeah, amazing and grace. Um, and I'd, I'd sing Amazing Grace and stuff like that. And I'd always see people get really, like, uh, taken, aback taken back it. when I'd sing. And I'd be like, I didn't realise I had a voice until I was about, say, 13 or yeah. something like that. So how did you how did you both get into Blue? Was it separately or did no, you know I've each got, other? I've got the story okay, here. Tell Basically, me the story. um another remember another level? Yes. Um, Dame Bowers. I think, yeah, the rest. I think it was East West Records or Bergen. whatever they were called. Yeah, whatever they were called. <laughs> and I think they were splitting up. Um I remember going to an, and, and this is how I got into this final audition, but I was modelling. Um and I was asked to go and dance in their video Bomb Diggy. Right, yeah. That's true. And um, and the lady who was auditioning said, can you sing? And I was like, no, man, I'm from Moss Side, you mad. I don't do them things, man. Like, <laughs> no, man, but I can rap, innit? <laughs> so I rap for her. <laughs> Did you rap for I her? I rap for her. And she was like, well, if you learn to sing, yeah. you know, you probably have a career. Because he's a pretty boy, innit? Um, pretty boy. And then, but I did write a song when I was 15. I remember writing it on the bus. And I kind of remembered it, so I sang of that. Can you remember it? I remember the first time my eyes clocked your eyes And I thought I would feel so alive I had to have you here right by my side Cause you find so fly, oh my, yes, oh my, oh my <laughs> Why, like a garage gym. <laughs> why, oh my, That's oh actually my, really good. Did we end up this way? <laughs> Tell me where you there. <laughs> yeah, sang that and then sounds got... like a garage gym that was, right? <laughs> And um, then I got a call to um, come to an audition. And that's when I walked into a room and there was eight of us. Wow. And Lee was one of them and Duncan was one of them. Right. Um, and I just remember we all had to stand in a line, remember with Kevin, the singing teacher. Yeah. And then he put on Usher yeah. and he said, you've all got to sing a line each. Wow. And I remember all of us doing it. And I'm thinking, and I'm being all nervous now. And I'm thinking, no, I can't really hold it. I don't know how to hold a note properly yet. Yeah. And then when it got to Lee, I just remember everyone's heads just went. <laughs> yeah. And then that we all looked at each other and we went, well, we really want to be in a boy band with him. <laughs> <laughs> I just, that's that what I remember. That's, yeah, that's what I remember. So when he, <laughs> so going back to what he was saying about, he, he knew he had something yeah. or he didn't realise he had something. It was just very, very apparent from that first moment. He, he opened his mouth. Yeah, I have to say, Lee, whenever I heard the blue songs and the, the high notes for me, unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, pretty was, special. People yeah. must have said that to you. I mean, you do have an absolutely incredible voice. I don't know. I just don't think I've got any balls. 
No, listen, he's <laughs> playing it down. <laughs> no, no, he's no, playing it down because when I moved no. in with him, when yeah. I moved in with him, he he used to do my head in with Flying Without Wings. Right, really? West the Life. Westlife song, yeah. But what I used to realise, he used to turn it up loud and then project on top of louder, it. Louder, louder wow. than... And I used to be outside his door, like, mm. watching him, watching his face go red. Yeah. Like, because he's like, oh, <laughs> doing, <laughs> doing all this. Yeah. And then his mom would be at the bottom of the stairs and go, mm, he's all right, isn't he? And I was like, how does he do that? And yeah, then, because he was actually one who taught me how to, how to sing and project. You, know, and, you, you said to me, I, I, I can't sing. And I said, yes, you can. I could hear, I mean, I've been brought up with many singing the teachers for years because I started so young. And um, <clears throat> and I listen. I really studied voices when I was younger. I studied boys Brian McKnight, Boys to Men, Babyface, and all these people. They have very unique tones. Yeah. Um, I was very into um, you know, urban gospel music and stuff. You know, yeah. I was brought up with that kind of music, really. Um, and I, when he sang, I heard his tone, and he didn't have the control, but. He had the tone, tone and yeah. I said to him, if you develop the, the, the control, your tone will come through. So I said, and and then we started doing stuff together, wouldn't it? I always used to do like these runs, at, uh, just like always doing that. Doing my head in. That, all the time. <laughs> and he'd be like, oh. I'm like, bro, we're having a conversation. Yeah, and he's like, like oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, because like I'd want to get the right. So if I do the yeah. different route, I go, I go like, ah, 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 ah. and I, I do that. Ah. Would he just annoy you on tour and stuff? Do you? No, so I just try the agility. I try and get the agility in it. No, it so. wasn't. It wasn't that on tour. It was. It was him practicing. It's like you know when they say like work on your craft. Yeah. When you're passionate about something, yeah. you do what he did. To us at the time, it was like, bro, there's a time and a place. Yeah. But then when we went on tour, yeah. and then he was doing those exact things, yeah. and then you saw the reaction from the crowd, that's when you just go, you know what, bruv? Yeah, you worked smashed on it. it. Which, which would then it. make everybody else in the group want to better themselves yeah. as well. So tell me about that. Like, sort of at the pinnacle of your success, what, looking back, what was sort of one of the most amazing things that happened to you being in the band or, you know, an opportunity that came to you by virtue of being in the band? Working with the people we work with, I yeah. think. Yeah, I think... Like, I mean, apart from being mm. with the boys and, and, have, and having the, the brotherhood that we've got, I think that the amount of legends that we've worked with and, and had the opportunity... Yeah, like, not yeah. many bands have worked with as, many, many, as yeah. many legends of we've, as we've actually worked with. Maybe some people work with a few or maybe one yeah. in their career. We've worked with Stevie Wonder, Elton John, Lionel Richie. I mean, I Calling uh, the Gang. Calling the Gang, yeah. Tom, Tom Jones. Tom Jones, Who yeah. was your favourite, if you could pick? Stevie, probably. Was it? I don't know. Was he, is he I, one of your idols? I, 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 no, it was, it was just the way he was on set. Really? I think he just kind of set an example on the video shoot. Yeah. He turned up and then he was the last What song did you sing with Stevie? Um, Sign Still Delivered, which I, like, I never I, I, wanted to do. I, I wanted yeah. to do Lately. I was like, why have we got to do Sign Still Delivered? And it was uh, a song he picked, apparently. Really? Was yeah, it? all right. Apparently. Yeah, apparently. apparently. Yeah. Because yeah. you did Sorry with Elton, didn't you? Yeah. Which, yeah. Was, which was a smash. Which was my which idea. Was, which was, was it? Was, yeah. And that was amazing. And that was a smash hit, wasn't it? That was number one. 40, it was the 36 40. countries around the world. Like, yeah, it was amazing. I mean, even now, that's an unbelievable Number one, song. 36 countries around the world. I come up with to do that idea because we was all, we all finished the, the one love album and, um, they, uh, we were sitting around with the record label, all the boys left. Yeah. As always, I was the last to leave the pub. And um, and I was I was there and uh, they said, what cover, cover should we do for the album? And I was like, sitting there thinking, uh, I'd probably come up with loads of different ideas. But then I said, what about Sorry Seems to be the Hardest Word by Elton John? And they was like, what song's that? And I was like, exactly. It's more yeah. like probably one of his, like his massive hit, but not so well known as like Rocket Man or right. Your Song. Still well known, but not yeah. like that um, candle in the wind kind of song. Um, so I could I I went in the studio that night and I did my own version of it, and then I gave it to the record label, and then they gave it to Stargate, and then we went in and recorded it, and then um, we saw Elton at a, uh, an event, and we thought, well, you know what, we're we're here, Elton's there, we've just recorded it. This is yeah, kind of scarily 
fate yeah. in, in some ways and you've got to take an opportunity like that. So we went up and asked him if he would play piano on the song that we just recorded and he said, yeah, okay. So we, the record That's label amazing. set it up. We went in the studio with him. And play, he, went, he literally... One take. I, one take, one played take, played the piano wow. down and then went, okay, uh, what, what do you want me to sing, sing. on it? <laughs> and <laughs> we went... There's a mic. You want to do your thing, do you want to do your thing? And, you know, for me, like, I grew up listening to Elton John. Like, do you know, I'll tell you, right, this is a this is God's honest truth. I was, um, I was very young. Yeah, keep praying. Yeah, I know yeah you know right. Yeah, so, yeah. This, and I'm, I'm, you know, I've, I'm not a religious person, but I am a spiritual person and I do believe in God and... You know that the, there's a, a higher entity of energy and whatever, and I think you can manifest things easily if yeah. you put your mind to it, literally. Um, and um, when I was younger, I used to listen to Elton John like on repeat. Um, your song was the first song that I sang to get in Italia Conti um, yeah. when I was younger, and that it was just it was candle in the wind. If I ever did karaoke, I was always doing Elton. Elton, yeah. Um, and um, I used to sing. I remember when I was younger, I was singing some songs in my bedroom. And I was this is when I was really young. Yeah. And um, I went to my mum and I said, Mum, I want to do, an El I wanna do uh, a song with Elton John. When I, I want to sing with him one day. And she went, all right, well, you know what? Keep praying and one day it might happen. Wow. So every time I used to sing uh, in my bedroom, yeah. I used to imagine that I was singing next to Elton John. Wow. And then... It, for years and years, every time I just imagined that I was singing with him, I used to just get lost in your song, Candle in the Wind. Wow. All the songs, that all these amazing, uh, you know, uh, uh, guess why they call it the blues, all they, the, these, the, an array of hits that you used to have. And so I you used really to, manifested that? I did, I Massively. did from a young age. I yeah. just yeah. used to sing, with, I used to feel like I was next to him when I used to sing. <clears throat> and then when we did the video with him, yeah, there was a part in the end of the song and and I actually harmonised with him. And I remember in the video wow. just sitting next to him and I just thought, <laughs> that happened. <laughs> <laughs> that is, you know, because I really believe in the power of manifestation. Massively, absolutely. Yeah. Massively. I mean, I know you're very spiritual, so am I. And I think a lot of our views are aligned with, with that and something I'd really like to talk about. Um, so just on that, sort of in terms of, um, you know, being, being in blue and doing all those things, you know, you're 20 years on now. I mean, it's a long time. Looking back now... Is there anything that you wish that you knew then that might have made things different for you in terms of some of the ups and downs that you went through? Um, I think I think it's more about education. I think we I wish we were more educated in the finance side of things. Yeah. Um, because it did feel. I mean, people might not know this, but we was probably earning around forty grand a week. Right. So we would Which spend. Is big money. So we would spend thirty grand a week. Right. Whether it's helping a family member or a friend, setting up stuff that we or didn't know setting up to stuff really we didn't structure it properly. We didn't know. We just had a lot of yes people around us. Yeah. And looking back, I just remember certain expressions on certain accountants' faces, where the, it just felt like they wasn't there. But they, you know, they'd gone through university. They've done all. That, they've worked hard to get to where they are, and they would just look at us as you're just lucky to yeah. be in this position. So they just let us. Blow the money. Right. No, you used to tell us to spend it. To spend it, yeah. And I'll just pay the tax. I'm, I yeah. remember one. I remember but, saying, yeah, yeah. yeah, I remember I said, what should I do about the tax? He said, spend it. Go and buy a property, a property and you do it later. Pay, that was honestly year. the yeah, advice. So, And I went, well, I don't know what fuck, I don't know what tax is. I, I yeah. was a kid. I was 17, 18 years old. I didn't even have, I would not even got any GCSEs. I walked out of school when I was 15 years yeah. old. So to suddenly have that amount of money that quickly, it... It was it was almost like a double edged sword. It was amazing, but actually quite dangerous. Yeah, you kind of dream of it because of what you see on TV. Right. Obviously, I'm from my side, so yeah. you know it was all. I, was I mean, you've, you know, you've grown up in a tough place. You've well, been, through, you've uh, yeah. seen stuff. You've been through stuff. I mean, exactly. that's the complete opposite end of the spectrum for you, isn't it? Well, I've always seen people with money, and I've right. seen them, and I've seen them be in the ghetto, but not own the house. Yeah. But own a Subaru. Yeah. Own jewelry. And just have loads of girls around them. That's what I thought life was about. Yeah. So as soon as you see a million quid, how do I invest that? Like, no one's telling me what to do with that. Yeah. And you've got all the jewellery and you've still got all of these amounts of money left over. It's like, well, what do I do with it? I've right. gone from signing on at uh, Moss Side, getting my gyro every two weeks, to having a million quid 18 months later. Yeah. 
I mean, that's a crazy you know, amount of um, pressure you, and res- self responsibility. Well, well, from a teenager, yeah, 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 that you would expect people around you. I mean, I do like in many ways. I think the industry's got a lot better just because now artists. There's so much material out there. You know, artists were a lot more educated about their rights, about how to manage their money, but then there are still lots of people that just don't, right? Yeah. And they end up in yeah, a situation. Yeah, but we're not there. We're, we're from an era where, the, the, you know, groups like S Club 7, I think the only ones that really got it right were Westlife. Yeah. Yeah, because they, they used to audit the record label. But we never, the, the, we the management and people, and I've had, the, yeah. you know, post Blue as well, Bad management, bad people, bad accountants, bad. I don't want to get in too much into it because it's negative and it's it's it, you, if and it's anything, it's life's, life's lesson. As it's well. life's lesson, and I think yeah, but my, I think it's important for people to hear it, and I'll tell you why. Because you know, this is exactly the kind of stuff that you wish that someone would have told you twenty years well, ago. Well, again, people did sort of tell us, but you chose not to listen. But it's not choosing not to listen. You just don't understand what they're saying. No, I definitely got ripped off. Oh, no, we did. Yeah. But I'm, what I'm saying no, I mean, is... I mean, post, post the, the, the stuff with Blue, I had stuff yeah, that Yeah, people with their hands out. Bad, yeah. No, but yeah. bad, like bad, like really like criminal shit that, that was legal. Like, yeah. Yeah. But I didn't realise. Yeah. Now if someone sat down in front of me and said, I've got a really good idea, X, Y, and Z, I'd be like, I've got a really good idea. How about you leave before I punch you in the face? <laughs> like, because you get, you understand. You just get wiser though. You, well, you, no, you do. You get you get a bit more astute to the bullshit. And, and um, I'm not happy that. that. I think when, you, when you've when you worked so hard, because you yeah. did, you worked yeah. hard, guys. You spent time hard. with your family. You went all around Very the world. Hard. I mean, that can't have been easy. I mean, it's a brilliant life and it's one that you wanted yeah, to be living. Yeah, it's hard because but I didn't you, see my family for years though. This is the thing, right? And you lose relationships. You don't have the same closeness. You know, I mean... How how do you after it all ends? How do you what do you come back to? How do you rebuild? I think it that? can disconnect you when you get to that level of fame, and yeah. I think we've seen that not just in our we're not anywhere near as someone like Michael Jackson or some celebrities that you see out there that go completely off the rails or look like they've been disconnected with life and they the reality. They, the reality. Because it's yeah. it pulls you so far apart from what anyone else can really equate to, yeah. that suddenly you become like this enigma, which you don't even realise who you are yourself. Yeah, because what it is is that the people that are close to you tend to look at you differently, like you've changed, even though you haven't been in contact for so long. Right. We still feel the same. I mean, we're in a car, we're in planes together. We, and all of a sudden, three or four years have passed in a flash. Yeah. And then you try to reconnect with those that you've sort of not left behind, but you, you know, I'm off working. Um, and it's just really, really yeah, hard fame, to, to. Fame people look at people like famous people, like they're some like, god. Like, they're yeah. not. Well, think about they're this, not. guys. No one's got, you... no one is any way, any way different than anyone else. It's just a perception. And That's people saying, these yeah. days, yeah. they see famous people as like this kind of. I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it. They they treat you different. Well, let's talk like, about social media because when you guys were famous, I mean, you guys were followed around and had paparazzi, but you didn't have social, social media. Can you media, imagine yeah. what, what? How do you think no, things would have been different having Instagram, I, it TikTok? Worse. It would have been a lot worse. I right. can't. I'm quite. I'm quite happy with my life now. I keep myself. I mean, I'm. I just went back on TikTok recently and I just put a load of stupid shit up there and it's more fun. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't. I delete stuff and I don't really try to engage too much. I don't. People can't private message me and yeah. like I found Instagram just so poisonous and toxic and and it used to be quite fun and cool, but it went into where Twitter is where it's just it's vile and nasty and and I I feel like you don't need to engage with that and have that in your space in your life and I feel like it. Now we're older and we've come out of the other side of it, and we we've now we missed that crazy uh, like Instagram kind of place where if we would have been around when Instagram came out back then, we probably would have had like hundred million, million followers, followers. I mean, you guys would millions, be but yeah. we don't because we're not of that era. Yeah, and I kind of I'm kind of like going, I don't really care how many followers I've got, and also I'm really happy I'm not I didn't experience that then yeah. we were a little bit more ambiguous where we could be yeah. under the radar a little bit more and still be um uh, you did, know. You, did you feel like you had any semblance of privacy though being in the band did you feel that you had that um i mean compared to what they have now um i think it's, it's worse now oh it's hundreds um, of worse, right because, because there's only so much space in the newspaper yeah 
So un until we had some music that was out and stuff like that, yeah, we used to get paparazzi following us after nightclubs all the time. Yeah. yeah. Just to get that one shot. We always used to feel like we was, that was being kind set of fun, up. Though. It was kind of fun. That was fun though, right? It was, sometimes. Yeah. I, nick I nicked someone's shoe once. <laughs> and he, he um, I had to a buy him a pair of new shoe. Uh, new <laughs> shoes, because he and I thought, and he was like screaming at me, "Give me back my shoe!" I was like, "No, fuck off!" <laughs> so I was going to, <laughs> he rang up the management and went, "You need my shoe, and I want a pair of new pair of shoes." I remember my cousin um, jumped out of the car once when um, he was being followed and took the paparazzi's keys out of his <laughs> out of his bike. Yeah, <laughs> and threw him in the bush, and then yeah. we <laughs> and then we. But that was pretty much that was about as bad as it got. And then you had obviously girls at the hotel. I mean, you you've been through a lot of stuff, haven't you? Like you've had lots of personal challenges yourself. Do you think that some of your you know, issues around sobriety came from being in blue and being in it so young and have, you know, having all of that sort of pressure of having to deal with that. Yeah. But if the mountain was smooth, you couldn't climb yeah. it, right? So, so that's 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 what's made you who you are today, right? I, no, I've got do you know a different to, Do you know what you used to like about Lee? There were certain things that would happen and no matter how good he is as a person, the press had a different picture of him. As a bad boy. So, what, so what he used to say was, do you know what, if that's what they, they're not going to change the narrative on me. So do you know what, I'll just, I'll give them what they want. Yeah. But then, and that means I'll never really know who I am. Right. As a person. Is it so where you're he protecting to, yourself? Then? So yeah, it's, well, you just play up to it, don't you? Yeah. It's, 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 it's like I say, it's like as soon as a newspaper had a narrative, they just wanted to keep pushing that. They still and they do still it. do now. Still like do the, it. at the end of a story, at the end of a positive story, they've still got the negative stuff right. from years ago that probably isn't even true. Yeah, but know? at the same time, um, it's when they stop writing about you that you've got to worry. Right. So yeah, as long as they're writing yeah, about you, fuck fine. them. Yeah. That's what I think. How it's like, you... look, no, people, if people are really that stupid to believe everything that the papers read uh, or print, then, then. That's more, more for you, because yeah. I, because because the, the, it's just selling papers. Yeah. You are just a consumer. Yeah, that's all you are. And you're if you're reading it and believing it, then you're they're they're winning. So for me, it's like, like I yeah, there's been ups and downs, but I the way I see it myself is I've grown up in the industry. I've, I was 16 when I first got in the Baby. band. Yeah, I was 17, 18. Why most people were going around puking in bushes and <laughs> doing like you know. Uh, uh, at school or uh, when they were in college, experimenting and, and being twats and figuring out life and who they are, I was doing it under a microscope. And yeah. and it's it's not, it's, it's like I said, it's been a double-edged sword for me. Um, I don't complain about it because I won't, because I've had a privileged life and I've been able to work with some of the, you know, mm. some of the most amazing people that people can only dream of. Yeah, um, I mean, some of the places you guys have been to. Yeah, some of the people I've got no way complaining. With. I'm not a complaining I'm person. No, I don't feel like you are, no. but, you know, I feel like everything that you go through in life really makes you who you are. And that, when you really get to that point in your life, that's when you can really look back and go, that might not have been great, but actually if that hadn't happened, I wouldn't well, be who helps, I am today. Exactly, it helps mould who you really are does. as a person and it depends how you... It humbles you. Like, sometimes you need to really... Well, there's an amazing Native American Indian quote that I always love and live by, which says, the heart has no rainbow if the eyes have no tears. Yeah. Which beautiful. is very true. And it's it's kind of like, if you don't know life, you don't know pain, which is Buddha as well. Say so that again, the like, heart. The heart has no rainbow if the eyes have no tears. Tears, right. So it's like you've got to go through pain. You've got life. Is, I was actually it's really funny we're having this conversation because I was speaking to my friend um, this morning and yeah. she's been going through a hard time. She's, you know, I won't go into it, but she's had a hard time lately. And I did say to her a, a, exactly this. It's like what's definitely inevitable is you're going to go through shit. Yeah. It's going to happen. Yeah. So if you expect it, then it's not so much of a shock. So if you're going to go think that you're going to go through your life and and that every single time something shitty happens to you and you go, why me? And then put that perception of it, then then you're always going to be putting the wrong angle on it. I think you've got to, when shit stuff happens, you've got to take it, accept it and deflect it. Yeah. And then go, okay, that's it, move on. You can't dwell on it. You can't, even if it's the shittiest, shitty of shittiest things that's ever happened. I, I have this philosophy that I think that everything in life is always happening for you, even if it's shit. Not to you. Just because expect it. it. it, it Just yeah, expect it. Navigate it navigates you, it moves your life in a direction. Don't actually, manifest that you end up it running. by expecting no. it because that's not going to do, that's not going to work for you because no. you can manifest shit things. If you think, if you put a ne negative spin on everything that 
comes into your life expecting it, it will come to you. But yeah. I think if it's like having a, it's like having a a, a a friend that's a little bit poisonous that you invite to a party when you know they're in Timbuktu. Yeah. Like she's like, oh, you're not oh, okay. Um, like yeah. keep keep them on the sidelines, yeah. but don't 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 look don't, don't invite, them, invite in them in. <laughs> you know, like you know what I mean? Because you know they're there. Yeah. But you can't ignore it because if yeah. you don't, if you ignore it, then it'll bite you even harder. And that person. The, the, the bad things yeah. will, you know, you know, you get what I'm saying. Okay, guys, I'm going to cut it there. That was such a powerful conversation and I'm so excited to share part two with you. In the second episode, we dive into some of the deeper stuff. We talk about mental health issues. We touch on spirituality, tarot, and most importantly, we talk about the ups and downs and the pitfalls of fame. I can't wait for you guys to tune in and listen. Hi guys, thank you so much for being on the Rice Journey with me, Henna Riaz. This podcast has been brought to you by Marlebone Publishing. Please don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Rise with Henna.